Hey, I'm Zealous H Plays. Welcome back to San Bernardino Zoo. Today we're going to be filling in the last little gap in the zoo's initial entrance area, just behind the picnic area here, and before we get to Madagascar, with one of Planet Zoo's cutest animals, the prairie dogs. This is where we're going to be building. It's the perfect size for prairie dogs, so let's get them in here. This little spot has been here since we built the desert house. It's got the research center behind it as well, and I've struggled to think of what to put in here. For a long time I wanted to do a reptilery, which is like a little outdoor area for smaller reptiles, which is really good in Southern California, the weather's perfect for that. And I was waiting for a smaller tortoise to be added because the giant tortoises just need so much space it wasn't practical to build it here. But when Frontier added the Herman's tortoise, it's in an exhibit box unfortunately, so we couldn't really get a reptilery to work. Uh, although we will be adding Herman's tortoise into the petting paddock next week. When the barnyard animal pack came out, I no longer needed to use prairie dogs to sort of fill in some of the space in the petting zoo because we had some actual appropriate animals for that. So uh, they are the perfect size to go into this little habitat here. So that's what we're going to be doing. First thing is just to theme this area a bit more. So at the moment, all the planting is based on the more tropical planting that we have in the water terraces. I'll leave a few of the palms in because they are all over San Bernardino Zoo with it being in California, but we're going to get a lot more sort of drier, more prairie style grasses in here as they'll fit nicely with the prairie dog habitat. So we've got some basic planting in there. We're going to do something more extensive later, but let's get on to building the habitat itself. So what I want is for the walls around the habitat to be a really natural looking plaster. So we're gonna use these upside down plaster cones from the Africa pack. They've got a really nice texture on them and quite an irregular shape. So what we're gonna do is use these to make the walls. We'll just color them to get rid of the paint. You can already see a nice kind of um, slightly weathered plaster look. And then I'm just using the normal piece of plaster there for a reference. And then we'll copy this on top of itself, get it lined up, and then switch to the slightly larger cone and use this for the base. So it's got an irregular shaped base as well as the wall itself being irregular. And once we've got one of these done, then we're just going to use this to make the entire wall really. We'll rotate it a bit so it doesn't look too repeated or anything. This is going to be the basic look for the wall. I think this will go really nicely with a more of a sort of prairie habitat. We're going to slant it backwards to make the viewing better for the guests. We get it nice and low. We'll put a guardrail on here later so that the guests don't just uh, climb over it and get in with the prairie dogs. So just slide this down a little bit more. I think that's uh, a good height for it. And then we'll take it and move it back to line it up with the path and start turning this one piece into the wall. So just copy this across here. Uh, probably do a few of these and then we'll go in and rotate one of them so they're not all exactly the same. I want it to look really organic, so we're going to line it up with the path exactly as it goes along. So there's no sort of really long straight lines of it. So we'll take this one, turn it round. Uh, needs moving up a little bit just to line it up nicely with the others. There we go. And then we've got one kind of building block that we can use to make the rest of the wall. So we'll turn this into a group and then just start copying it along and then rotating it round to match up with that path. And it's little things like using smaller groups and then just manually rotating them really precisely to fit alongside of the path. It's going to make the zoo look more natural and more realistic than if you just do one big long um, bit of wall and then put it along in a straight line. So much better like this. I'm also going to cover up the edges of the path by changing the colours on this decal so it matches it as closely as possible and then just putting it in here and that'll really make the path and the wall meld into one kind of thing like you can see like this. Last thing you want in the zoo is any patches of green grass showing between habitats and things like that. I remember when I first started playing Planet Zoo that used to drive me absolutely mad. I couldn't understand why we didn't just have like a tarmac brush that we could cover the whole map with, <laughs> which to be honest, I still think would be pretty useful. But um, I just couldn't work out how to make things look good until I realized that you just needed to make sure habitats and paths were always either touching or had something covering them up between them to stop the terrain just showing through. And as you can see, we're pretty much done with the wall now, just taking it in a pretty loose shape around the area that we've got available to us, avoiding straight lines uh, wherever we can. I looked at a few prairie dog habitats to get inspo for this one, mainly in Fort Worth Zoo, uh, Mont Sauvage in France, uh, San Diego Zoo, and Southwick Zoo, which I think is in the US. And we're just going to perfect the weathered plaster look by adding some decals. We got some decals to make it look like parts of it are broken away and then loads of decals to make it look slightly grungy. And now it's time for Franchise Masters. This is something I literally just discovered and you're getting a sneak peek at an animal that might be coming to San Bernardino Zoo soon here. 
But if you're ever looking for an animal of a particular colour, sometimes there's a bug in the game where the colour doesn't appear where it should do on this list here in the market. If that happens to you, if you just click on compare mates, that piece of information about what colour the animal is will magically show up there. And there's no need to guess based on the icon. So if you're as particular about the colour of your animals as I am, that could be really useful. All right, time for some terrain work now. What we're going to do is raise the habitat in the middle here so that there's um, a better viewing for the prairie dogs and it just makes it look a bit more interesting. So we'll raise it up and then we're going to smooth it off and then we're going to push down just the centre very slightly to flatten it off. And then we just get this very gradual slope in the middle of the habitat here. And now we can start terrain painting. This is going to be pretty much dirt and sand, the entire habitat, won't be any grass or anything else in here. So we'll cover it all with soil and then we're going to mix in some sand as well. We want to make it look like we've got a soft substrate there that the prairie dogs can dig into because they are going to dig their little burrows. If there's ever a place in the habitat where you don't want them to dig burrows, they will dig in sand and soil. They will not dig in rock which can be useful when you're designing habitats. We're using the small guest gate for this one, which is fun, don't get to use that very often. And then we're gonna very carefully adjust the bits of plaster around the gate so that the wall joins really um, organically onto the gate. Worth fiddling about with this, even though it's at the back of the habitat, because you can see it across the wall at the front. Pretty small habitat this, so all the details matter here. You can't really get away with uh, hiding anything at the back. Not that we would ever do that, of course. We'll chop some of this wall off here and then finally lower a few of the rocks at the front so that we've got some nice uninterrupted access for the keepers. And once we've finished adjusting these rocks so that the guest gate looks good, we're going to drop in one of the nesting boxes that we designed for the kiwis in the night house, just so there's some sort of permanent place for the prairie dogs to go, as well as the little burrows that they're going to make. Then we're going to drop in some enrichment items, so melon feeders and the little log that they can crawl through, same as the meerkats, I love that. We'll definitely be seeing some of that in the end cinematics. Use the path trick there to make sure that the enrichment items don't deform all this lovely terrain that we've made. And then we're going to drop a few plants in. In all the prairie dog habitats I looked at, they're pretty much all completely barren of live vegetation. So I'm going to squeeze some kind of dead grass in here just for a little bit of colour. And the rest of it will all be um, dead trees, logs, tree stumps, that kind of thing. So to make it look attractive, what we need to do is get the area behind the habitat to look really nice. So gonna drop in loads of um, North American trees, mainly sort of prairie and desert trees. So it's not too colorful, but just a, a splash of green, a few different shades of brown, and it should really bring the whole habitat to life, even though we can't put too many plants in the habitat itself. I like these soap tree yucca plants. I haven't used them very often, but they're really nice. Now behind this habitat is another area that hasn't had a great deal of love, which is the join between where we are here and the research center. So I'm gonna do a little bit of work now because this is gonna be visible to the guests when they're looking at the prairie dogs. We're gonna put a little bed in here for some grasses. This is just next to the um, off-show habitat that you can see there. That is where I research any um, walkthrough exhibit animals when they get added into the zoo. One of the fun things of doing franchise mode YouTube is when a new pack comes out, I actually have to research all the animals uh, as quickly as humanly possible so I can get the custom signs that we use in, any new enrichment items, not that there's been any of those lately. And that offshore habitat really helps to move that process along as quickly as possible. I'm gonna put some of the, uh, I think it's the big blue stem grass in here, because it's the tallest grass. So it'll be visible from the guest path on the other side of the prairie dogs. I'll put a tree or something in the middle as well, just to make it a bit more attractive. It's all just so that we've got things in the background that nobody will really notice, but they just frame the habitat and make everything look good from whatever angle you're looking at. So we'll get that tree in there. And as you can see, it's starting to look quite lush in the background. Now, before we finish off the rest of the habitat, I just want to show you something that was supposed to be in the Indian Avery episode, but I ran out of time, which is just a little tribute to Drac, who built a lot of the birds in this habitat. As a little thank you, he's one of my favorite creators um, and one of my favorite people to chat to about the game and zoos and architecture and everything else. Thought it was time he had a little spot in the zoo. Right, onto some netting. So all the prairie dog habitats I looked at, or almost all the prairie dog habitats I looked at, had mesh over the top of them. So we're gonna put some of that in here. And as I've said many times in this series, I am a great believer in not building things more than once if you can help it. So this is the ultra realistic mesh that we built for the Indian Avery. And we're gonna adapt this so it fits perfectly over this habitat as well. The thin poles and the mesh are pretty subtle. And when you're down at guest level, 
you almost don't notice it, your focus is completely on the habitat itself. But this just keeps the prairie dogs safe from any eagles or any other sort of flying predators. Don't want these little dudes getting eaten. And while I finish that off, let me tell you about the zoo trip that I'm gonna be taking soon that you guys helped me plan. Thank you so much for all your suggestions about which zoos in Europe that I should visit. I have just finished booking my trip. I'm gonna go and see three of Europe's finest zoos, none of which I've been to before. I cannot wait to go and see them. I'm going to be starting the trip at one of your most recommended zoos. I think it was third in the final tally, which is a zoo I've wanted to visit ever since I was a little kid and I discovered that it was the oldest zoo in the world, the Tiergarten Schönbrunn in Austria. And I'm going to be finishing at your guys' most recommended zoo, Zoo Leipzig in Germany. And conveniently situated exactly halfway between those two zoos is Prague Zoo, which I am really excited about. This was another one of your top 10 zoos. I knew pretty much nothing about it. Having originally selected it purely based on geography, I've since had numerous people tell me it is the greatest zoo they've ever been to, so I cannot wait to see that one as well. I will of course be documenting the trip and we'll be having some new zoo tour videos up on the channel. I'll show you all the most inspiring things that I see while I'm at that zoo. It's still a few weeks till I leave, but I'm really looking forward to it. And thanks again for all your suggestions. Right, we've got the planting done. What we need to do now is put in the railings that I spoke about at the beginning. So we're gonna use this fence from, I think it's from the Australia pack. and just use the top of it. Really simple uh, curved metal piece. And then once we've sunk it in here, we're gonna bring it along and then line it up with the wall and then just move it back a little bit so we get this kind of circular join between each piece which makes it look really cohesive like it's um, one long fence rather than just loads of smaller fences stuck together it takes a bit of lining up but once it's done i'm really happy with how that looks it's only a small habitat this but it is an important one because this is a bit of a milestone with this habitat in the western part of the main path that goes across the zoo is now complete we've got an unbroken section of zoo from the palm cafe and desert house through the picnic area, this habitat, Madagascar, the Indian forest, and finally Amazonia, all complete. And when we finish the petting zoo in the next episode, a big chunk of the eastern half of the path will be completed as well. We are almost done with the habitat now, just signage and a couple of little details to go. I really like these little um, prairie dog signs. Um, we've only got one of them, so what I'm gonna do is spin them round, put them at different heights, and make it look like we've got a little family of prairie dogs here their uh, slightly angry looking faces and then we're going to build a little um, set of plinths for them to stand on just using the wall pieces again so we'll just position these exactly under each one of these models so we get an effect like it's uh, a set of rocks that they are standing on one of the things that prairie dogs like to do uh, similar to meerkats is if there's any slightly higher ground around they like to stand on it and keep a watch out there's not a lot of high ground on the american plains but rocks bushes things like that little mound of earth, anything they can find to get themselves a bit higher. They like to do some kind of sentry duty on there. We'll use the smallest TV sign to get an animal sign in here. And we'll have to hide one of the big habitat signs in the wall so that the guests still get educated. And then finally, we're just going to drop some dead leaves on the mesh. There's quite a few trees around here, so reasonable to expect there'll be some up here. Probably not as many as this considering where we are in the world, but I really like the look of it, so it's going to stay. Things like this that add another layer to the habitat and another dimension are always cool, always worth doing as far as I'm concerned. And with that, the prairie dog habitat is complete. Let's check it out. I love this shot. Having this much zoo in the frame with nothing unfinished makes me very happy. Got another shot of it here, looking at it through the uh, picnic area, but let's check out the prairie dogs. Here they are, so cute with his angry uh, wooden friends looking on in the background. I love the borrowing. I think it's one of the best things Frontier have added to the game with the, the meerkats as well. It looks so good. He's gonna go through a little tunnel here as well and then out the other side. It's kind of tough doing a habitat that is as brown as this. It's just soil, dead trees, brown plaster. But I'm very pleased with the final result. I think there's enough in here to make it look interesting. And I just wanted to make it as realistic as possible. And a big pile of soil with some low walls around it seems to be the way that uh, zoos display prairie dogs. Let's take a look at the whole habitat now, do a bit of a fly through. This little guy is going crazy in the middle around that tree. You see the dead leaves at the top as well. Very happy with how this little build has turned out, especially as been waiting to get prairie dogs into the zoo for so many months now. Let's take a look at where we started today in our little blank space. And this is where we are now, everything completed. Next week, we'll be finishing the petting paddock that we started last week. We're gonna be building for alpacas, Herman's tortoise, 
and maybe some others as well. Just time to fly over to the Explorers Club monolith. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you to everyone who has joined the Explorers Club, and I'll see you again next week for some more Planet Zoo. Bye.